Hello, Barry William Maglidity, your host of the Comeback Game podcast. In today's episode, we speak with Tad Stevens from Accelerated Funnels, and we go a little bit woo. Uh, many of you know who have definitely listened or watched an episode in the past um, that I'm all about the inner game. I'm all about uh, working on yourself first before your business, before your relationships, before your finances, because I absolutely believe that until we do that, you're going to grossly limit yourself uh, and you're going to focus on a whole bunch of strategies and tactics that simply just don't work. Uh, this episode's fantastic for those of you who are in business and uh, feel like maybe you're a little bit stuck wanting to move to the next level. Uh, maybe you're also starting to realize that the inner game and your mindset have a significant impact to the success that you uh, create and you achieve in business. And so uh, jump on this episode. It's fantastic. We speak a little bit about the law of attraction, but more importantly, we speak about uh, the consciousness of humanity. And what I mean by that without being all woo woo is that uh, there's been a significant shift over the past 20, 30, 40 years and people with BS's radars are stronger than ever before. And they're aware if you and your business is not congruent, if you're not authentic. And yet a lot of people don't know this. A lot of people are posting a whole bunch of stuff online with the perception that they're greater uh, and further along than what they are. And yet your prospects and your customers are well aware of this. So Tad and I speak a little bit about that and uh, what you can do to fix this to attract a bunch more clients and a bunch more customers, but equally too, how you can really remove the stumps and the blockages holding you and your business back. If any that resonates, uh, jump on through now. Let's start this fantastic interview with Tad Stevens from acceleratedfunnels.com. G'day, I'm joined today by Tad Stevens from Accelerated Funnels. Tad, where are you calling in from today, mate? Uh, I am in Evergreen, Colorado, just west of Denver, up in the mountains. Fantastic. And I'm uh, currently in Nusa Dua, uh, Indonesia. Mate, for those who haven't uh, maybe heard of you before or come across you, can you just start by maybe sharing a little bit about uh, what it is you do and who you are? Absolutely. Um, again, my name is Tad Stevens. Um, mostly what I do is help other people deal with their marketing challenges. Um, I've been doing this on and off for about 15 years, been focusing on uh, really more coaches, speakers, entrepreneurs for the last three years, built dozens of funnels for people, he has been on a, um, oh, just an individual basis up until here recently where I packaged it a little yeah. different, but all different kinds of marketing uh, different pieces of it. It's something I really enjoy, something I had to learn how to do to run a website that my wife and I built about 15 years ago and have just yeah. fallen in love with it and keep doing it. Yeah, fantastic. And mate, how long have you been in the, uh, been, been, the, been the entrepreneur, the business game? How long ago did you start? In the entrepreneur business game, I think I've, first, well, I've been dabbling in it ever since I was in high school. Uh, when I actually first launched something and did something that actually generated revenue, we started in 2002. We launched a website two years later in 2004, selling continuing education to CPAs or chartered accountants, I believe in your part of the world. Uh, but it's just the yeah. continuing education that they have to take. And it kind of took off. We got in early and it worked and still working really well. Enjoyed it much more than I did my corporate job. So I eventually left that and doing this full time. Fantastic. So you've been uh, essentially business owner entrepreneur for the last 16 to 18 years. Um, I'm sure you've seen a lot change in that period of time, especially when it comes to the online space. Um, what have been some of the challenges or adversities that you guys have had to overcome um, in yourself and in your, in your business in these past, past few years? Well, it's interesting you mentioned myself because after doing this for 16, 17 years, I have come to the conclusion that most of the problems that I've run into have been self-imposed. Uh, yeah. Beliefs, uh, belief systems, just not really looking at things in the most efficient and effective way or the way that benefited me the most. As far as yeah. what's changed, I mean, technology has changed fairly drastically. Um, yeah. One thing that I... I feel has not changed is the, the human interaction or engagement that has pretty much stayed the same. It's just the channels, the frequency, the delivery, um, all that stuff has changed and is changing constantly. But in the end, at the end of the day, we're still just people talking to other people. 
And I think a lot of people yeah. miss that and spend more time and more effort on the technology or the tools and really benefits. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I remember I was having an interview with someone recently um, on the comeback game and, you know, we talked about how really the principles of human interaction and, and copywriting haven't changed in, in over a hundred years. You know, uh, what has changed is obviously the medium and the way that we can connect with people has become easier than ever yet. You know, a lot of these entrepreneurs and, and newer entrepreneurs and business owners are so folk, focused and fixated on, on the platform, the tactical aspect, rather really diving deep into strategy and really diving deep into having that human interaction, that conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And just yeah. to throw uh, add to that. Well, sorry? I was just going to say, I was going to add to that. My, I can't, I don't know where I heard it first, but somebody said, if you want to see the best salesperson in the world, look at a four-year-old. And, you know, we've had four-year-olds around for 100,000 years. It's, it's the same yeah. basic interaction. I mean, they, they have no remorse about just asking for what they want. They're not rude. Yeah. They're not implied. They're just four. Yeah. Yeah, and they have a way of often getting what they want as well, <laughs> one way or another, too. They do. Yeah. And uh, something else interesting you said as well um, was around, you know, what you've realized over the past 16, 18 years that, you know, the challenges that you've had have been self-imposed. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them of that have come from you. Let's dive into that a little bit more because, um, you know, I guess that's that's something that I'm heavily about and, and also our company, The Game Changes, about is around helping people make the shifts in their inner game and their outer game. You know, I see far too many people focusing on strategy and tactics and that aspect. You know, you can jump onto Google, you can jump onto YouTube, you can find 100 videos that teach you how to maybe build funnels or run ads or uh, you know, set up systems for your business or hire yeah. staff. So much so I think that there's almost too much information out there which confuses us. Um, but the one thing that I see that there's a lack of education for, uh, like really lasting education is um, both working on the inner game or that, that mindset component and being able to integrate that with the outer game, the strategy and the tactics. The, you know, the, the mindset stuff exists and the strategic stuff uh, exists. But how do you actually blend those two together in such a way that allows for great performance in your business and in your life? Uh, good question. So, I'm not, not sure I have the answer, or at least the definitive answer on that. I know for me, um, once I started working on my inner game, so to speak, yeah. is a lot of the integration and the other you know, necessities to get things done just kind of started falling into place. I didn't have yeah. to work as hard at all the other stuff, you know, everything outside of my inner game. Uh, once I got my inner game more in line with, with, um, or with my purpose, what, what I want to do when I get up in the morning, what gets me out of bed, you know, why I get excited, what I'm passionate about. Once I lined that up and for lack of a better word, phrase, let go of trying to make everything line up and get the right tool and the most current widget or chat bot or whatever it happens to be. Um, I yeah. started having a lot more success and I got a lot more efficient. I got a lot farther, a lot faster. So that's why I was saying that most of the things that have held me back or gotten in my way are things I put there beliefs that I had that, Oh, I got to get, you know, the latest, chat bot or the latest funnel builder or page builder or something like that. And it's really not what I've come to believe is that really is almost irrelevant. I mean, you got to have them. You got to, if you're going to be online, you got to have a page builder, but whether you yeah. use this one or that one or some other one, as long as it gets the page up, it really doesn't matter. It's not the tool. It's the way you approach it. It's the psychology. It's your, you know, actually getting it out there and turning it on, which is a lot of people I see or, and have seen, they will spend a lot of time building stuff. And then when it comes time to turn it on, they get scared or they worry or whatever, and they just don't. So they have all these great systems and products out there that are just sitting there. Um, and I, I'm guilty of the same thing, have been for years, and it's something I work on every day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I uh, tend to agree. I think that um, I see so many business owners and entrepreneurs getting caught up in the next thing that someone says on online's working, you know, the next chat bot or the next funnel or the next, mm -hmm. you know, integration or connection. And, you know, they're constantly chasing this shiny thing, but failing to see anything through to completion, failing to actually get things launched, 
fall over and, and work out what's best. And I guess the interesting thing is that, you know, just because you copy somebody's ad and even copy somebody's funnel or copy someone's way of doing it doesn't mean you get the same results. And the reason being is because you have different beliefs, you have different um, values and you have, you know, a different business model. And so I think, you know, to kind of align with what you, what you say, more important is that you are connected strongly with, with your sense of purpose and your sense of value and your sense of what it is you want to create your business for because otherwise mm -hmm. yeah. you're traveling through life um, constantly, you know, following somebody else or constantly looking in the rear vision mirror rather than forging your own path, which is super important as, a, as an entrepreneur. Yeah, uh, it, it has been for me. And when you were mentioning, you know, chasing shiny objects, I always used to kid people that, you know, if you looked up a definition of shiny object, my picture would be there. You know, this is the yeah. guy that has wasted more time and money than anybody else, you know, but it, you know, as I go farther and farther, I've come to realize that it's that way on purpose. I mean, we're kind of in some ways hardwired to look for the new thing, to look for the, you know, the, the greatest, the latest, the, you know, most current, most unique and as marketers or if we're into marketing we need to make sure that we understand that yeah that's intentional they're saying that on purpose because they know that we'll a lot of us will gravitate towards that and it's like i said yeah. it's something that i struggle with all the time i mean i i do not get on to jv zoo anymore um i do not get on to clickbank i do not get on to you know any of those sites anymore because i'm, I'm like a kid in a candy store I just love looking yeah. around and shopping and it doesn't help me. Yeah. Well, most of that self-help becomes shelf help. You know, you buy it and it sits on the shelf and <laughs> nothing, nothing happens with it, right? Oh, absolutely. Before, uh, before the internet really got big, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time is, and you mentioned shelf, um, or I used to call it shelfware is a new product or a new version would come out. And so I'd buy it and it would come in a box, you know, you'd get a box, UPS would deliver a box to your door and over I had one corner that I stored all my boxes in. I literally had stacks and stacks of boxes that I never opened. Well, then it got worse when the internet came along and I could order it and I could just put it in a file on my PC. Then it didn't take up space in the house anymore. <laughs> I think um, uh, what you're saying before around like, you know, marketers create that way and they speak to you in such a way that, you know, has you feel like you need to buy this next thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like, it's even, I feel like it's even more than that. I feel it comes down to almost like our innate, an, innate being as human beings, which, you know, is that instinct for survival. You know, we have an innate instinct as human beings to survive and to reproduce, you know, from the, the creature part of our, our brain, the critical right. part of our brain. Yeah. And part of, part of thriving is to belong, right? And so it touches on that. If I haven't yep. bought this course or I haven't done this thing, if I've you know, not got the latest and greatest of things going out there, I don't belong to the masses, you know? But when you look at that, the greatest entrepreneurs in the world have never belonged to the masses. That's what's made them the greatest entrepreneurs in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've, they've chosen to do things differently, you know, like Steve Jobs, um, Elon Musk, they've chosen to do things differently when others said, they wouldn't even um, even many of the greats from a long time ago. It's their ability to create something new or create something different that then creates the mass following and creates that the diversification and innovation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you've you've seen a lot, mate. Like over over the past uh, almost twenty years. Let's be honest. You've seen a lot in the business game. Um, Pretty much. I can yeah. imagine you've made a lot of mistakes. Um, and probably had a lot of successes as well. What have been some of the biggest challenges you've been faced with over that period of time? What, what have been some of the things we've looked back and, and have taught you the greatest lessons, but through that adversity and failure? The, the biggest challenge I think that I uh, have overcome and, and still and work on daily is um, basically realizing that I'm always dealing with another human being my background before I got into marketing and before I started doing entrepreneurial type activities was I was a large software system developer and project manager. So I spent my days in a corporation cubicle talking to machines and transitioning into a world where my, one of the things I had to do on a daily basis was influence people to see what I was doing as new, unique, better, whatever. Um, it, that was a struggle for me 
because I was trying to do things the way I thought were right and yeah. not looking at it from my prospects or my uh, client or customer's perspective when that is really what I've learned in the um, since then is that that is probably the most productive thing that I can do is looking and talking to people and addressing them, speaking to them in their language, looking at what yeah. their needs are, what their wants are, um, solving their problems. What I particularly need want um, is not nearly as important as satisfying the other person uh, that I'm talking to. That took yeah. me a, a while. And yeah. like I said, it's something I still work on every day, but from my background, there was, I mean, I, you know, I talked to machines all day. So there was a yes or a no, that was it. People aren't like that. <laughs> they don't operate like that. That's the biggest one is just transitioning from, I mean, my, besides that, I mean, my, um, my education is in accounting, information systems, economics, things like that. And those are very strict disciplines. Whereas mm -hmm. marketing, psychology, influence, talking to human beings, again, you want to see a master, look at a four-year-old. They don't worry about mm -hmm. all that right stuff and getting things lined up. They just go talk to people. They watch facial expressions. They watch body language. They understand what it is to communicate at that level. That took me a long time. Yeah. 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 So true. I, I'm, I'm not... I can't remember who said it, but someone said the easiest way to get what you want is to help others get what they want. Oh, uh, who I, said I, that? Yeah, that's a great quote. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Zig I Ziglar. It, yeah, I think it was Zig Ziglar. I think you're right. Um, because as entrepreneurs, like a lot, like many, let's be honest, many get into the business because they want to forge a different life for themselves. There's that bit of a yep. rebellion that wants to forge a different life. Many get in as, as what I call accidental business owners. And then, and then you have others as well that get in because they generally have a desire to create change, to solve a problem. And regardless mm -hmm. of where I guess you're at, um, you know, in terms of your motivations to um, being in business, you know, once you, I've noticed a significant thing with our clients is that once you move past that place of scarcity, like once our clients move past a place of, and not all of them, but the, but the ones that come into us that are in that place, once they move past that place of scarcity, they have more than enough money to live on and I've got time back. I, I notice every single time something shifts inside of them to where they want to contribute, to where they want to make a bigger difference. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing, that's when their business really takes off, right? That's yeah. when their business really takes off. When they're not in it for themselves anymore, they're in it to fix people's problems. And I, I guess that to me, I see is a huge key into what makes a successful business someone who's you know, dedicated to consistently solve the problems of others whilst also running a sustainable venture in the same time. Yeah. What have been some other, I guess, some other key insights. That was fantastic, Tad. What have been some other key insights that you've noticed along the way? You know, obviously one is, is, you know, making sure you speak to other humans, uh, being able to help fix their problems rather than necessarily your own. What have been some other great insights you've seen or received? Um, I think one of the biggest insights or lessons that I've learned is, um, as I kind of mentioned earlier is lining up what I do with what's important to me. W what's my passion? Mm -hmm. What's my purpose for getting out of bed in the morning? Um, I was yeah. reading a sales book and the, the author was talking about that, that if you're, if whatever your business is, your offer, whatever it is, is not lined up with your purpose is you're going to have mm -hmm. to fake it and that's going to come through. You know, you, yeah. people are going to know that you aren't really totally 100% committed to what you're doing. And once I learned that and started talking to people from more passion than logic, that I really believe this. I mean, I am vested in this. I totally believe that whatever I'm talking about will help you. Um, I, all of the sales problems that I had for 10 years before that virtually disappeared because I wasn't really selling them. I was trying to give them something that would actually help them. And that, um, besides the just understanding that I was talking to another human being was huge for me and still is. Uh, because now mm -hmm. before I was, oh, you know, I'm afraid to talk to this guy or this gal because, you know, there's so much, so much farther along than I am 
or you know they have a huge business and they don't want to talk to me well all that's disappeared because what i am offering what i'm talking to them about i truly believe will help them and if they don't want it you know that's great have a great day but i know it'll work and i don't have to act i don't have to try to sell anymore i just talk and that to me has been huge as well yeah do you think do you think that's changed and what i mean by that is um I, I think people are way more consciously aware now to to the intuition and to their feeling than ever before. Like I remember years ago, I went to buy some um, antivirus software for my computer and I was talking to this guy at uh, the local hardware in Normans, I think it was in Launceston, Tasmania. And uh, he sold me one and he told me that that was the one that he was using his computer, but I felt otherwise. Like I could clearly feel that this guy was not speaking straight to me. And he was selling the one that had commissions or the best incentive the highest commissions for him yeah yeah i don't know about you but my bs radar is way up like i can tell in an instant if someone's trying to pull it over me if they're being disingenuous inauthentic and i think pretty much most other people can as well now you know do you think that's changed Do you think we've always been this aware or have you noticed that we're becoming more aware as a a, a race and you know that's interesting because i have actually thought about that and i've talk to my wife about it uh, quite frequently and my kids about it is I think we've always been that way and we were much more in tune to those feelings those in- intuitions those instincts say 40 50 years ago back when we were more dependent on each other and we had to we had to get along with our neighbors because there wasn't any place mm-hmm. else to go but mm-hmm. with technology coming along we've become you know more we carry our phones we look at our phones more than we look up and see other people and we got into that for several decades. And I think we kind of drifted away from that. We didn't depend on that, that instinct like we used to. But now mm-hmm. that we've gone you know, for a certain amount of time, for a certain distance, we've found that, hey, that didn't work so well. You know, we, gotta, we still gotta talk. We still gotta look at other people to see what they're saying. Is it true? You know, the software mm-hmm. guy, you know, your, your BS meter went off. Well, you know, if you don't talk to him, if you don't look at him, you're not gonna know that. And so we've gotten mm-hmm. burned enough over the last several years that was, oh, you know, relationships have become much more important than say 15 years ago online. I remember when mm-hmm. I first started um, with selling things online is it was more important to look like you were a big firm. So I had an email address for every venture that, and domain for every venture that I did because that was more influential than them talking to me. Nobody knew me at all, but if it was a company, they would trust it more. Well, that's been overplayed to the point where now it's kind of flipped. Now people, and at least in my view, want to know that there's another human being on the other side of that mm-hmm. chat or that, that email that they can trust. They want, to, they want to see their eyes so they know if their BS meter is gonna go off or not. So in a way, I think, yeah, we've always been that way. We got away from it. And now we're starting to drift back to it because what we did didn't work. That's mm. that maybe a long drawn out explanation, but. No, I, it, I, I, yeah, I guess I've never seen it like that. I, I've kind of looked at, when, I, when I've looked at, at this particular situation, I've looked at maybe 15, 20 years ago and how things were back then. And, and personally, I've always been quite in tune with my heart or with that gut instinct. but. I remember thinking back then, like a lot of people, noticing around a lot of people weren't, like a lot of people were kind of walking around half asleep and not picking up on these subtleties. Whereas now uh-huh. I'm seeing people are more awoke and they're picking up on them. But I guess I've never looked back past that 15, 20 years ago and thinking about it now and, and you know, remembering conversations from mum and dad or my grandparents, I think you're probably right. I think back then there was less distractions. There was less busyness going oh, on. Oh, a ton, was, yeah. Yeah, a ton less distractions. To, to, to feel that stuff. And then, you know, the, the uh, interwebs come on board and everyone got very busy, very distracted and the kind of, you know, we moved away from ourselves. And in many ways, I guess, the last few years, we're starting to come back to, to us again and that human, human interpersonal relationships. Mm-hmm. I, that, that, is, that is the way that I look at it. And yeah. I, think it's, I think it's important to realize that because I think it's much more beneficial to, to not to oversimplify it, but to talk to people. Yeah. I think we're going to be a lot better off as a species um, if we just talk to each other instead yeah. of, you know, just not talking to each other. But yeah, I mean, it, it just seems that way to me. 
Yeah. It's um, funny you share that. So, so recently, uh, last year, I decided to, to exit um, my company operationally for two reasons. One was because it felt a little incongruent that we helped our clients exit their businesses, but I was still working in mine, even though <laughs> I love it. So I was like, okay, I need to, to do the same thing just to kind of hold some uh, authenticity and congruency of what we do. And number two was to travel this year. So um, recently started to travel. Uh, moved over here to Bali for the next couple of months and uh, I was met up with a few friends and they said there's something weird about Bali is that anything you ask for you tend to kind of get and one guy was was sitting in the sauna the other day speaking to a, uh, um, two of my mates were speaking and he was saying how he wanted to kind of find the process to move through some trauma that he had around an accident and mm-hmm. uh, was was thinking about sort of undergoing some sort of breathwork session and randomly this other guy in the sauna is like oh hey are you guys speaking about breathwork he's like oh I'm a breathwork facilitator um, I'm learning to work. <laughs> you can come and facilitate it. Uh, last night I was on the beach with a friend, and uh, when I chose to exit, I was like, I need to, I need to find something else to do with my time. Otherwise, I'm just going to lose, lose the plot. So I started to learn the guitar last year. Um, I'm not very musically minded at all, and I was like, it'd be a good challenge to distract me from mm-hmm. wanting to, to work. Since moving over here, I don't have my guitar teacher anymore. So I was walking on the beach with a friend last night and I, uh, I mentioned, I was like, oh, look, I'd love to find a guitar teacher over here. And then lo and behold, my mate writes me this morning and says, oh, sorry, I didn't get back to you last night. I was having guitar lessons, right? <laughs> in here in Bali. And, and, and I think that there's just such a power around um, asking for what you want and being super, super clear on that intention too, how quickly the universe, God, whatever you choose to say, will turn around and deliver that to you if you're open to receiving it. Yeah, and I, and I think that that last part is is critical. Is that if you're open to receiving it, because what the a way another way I would put it is there's opportunity all over the place for what you want, mm-hmm. what you desire. Uh, most of us don't open the door when it knocks, or don't even know that any, that it's knocking. I mean, we're so caught up in our whatever it is that we're doing, we just don't look up and see it. But Mm -hmm. I've noticed that over the last several years, the more open I've been, the more things have come to me. And, you know, whether you call it, um, you know, law of attraction or universe or whatever it is, I think it's all related that you have to be open to it. If you're not open to it, you're not going to see it. And if you don't see it, you you can't receive it. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think if you, as you said, if you ask for what you want, or you're at least yeah. open for what you want, that you're going to find a lot more of it makes its way to your door. Like, it's just ridiculous. It was 12, 12 hour turnaround from the conversation. <laughs> had, had, <laughs> That's pretty fast. No, 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 that, that is, is pretty I, fast. I, literally a message this morning saying, hey, sorry, I didn't, didn't uh, pick up your text. I was getting a tell us. I was like, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was it? Something you said before. Yeah, so... I think if you're not open to it, that you, you get a big kick up the ass as well, though. Like, I guess if you're open to it, um, I operate under the premise that we don't get what we want, we get what we need. And, you know, the greatest lessons that I've, that I've had have been through challenge and adversity. Um, yet the challenge and adversity that I experience now is very different to what it was a few years ago. A few years ago, it was, it was a kick up the ass, you know, because I wasn't listening. I wasn't, you know, following my heart. I wasn't, you know, listening to that guidance that I was getting and, and acting from that place all the time. Now that I am, it's not so much a kick up the ass, it's more like a slight shunt in the right direction when those challenges come along because I'm able to, to ask different questions of them rather than seeing them as challenges or problems, I'm able to see them as opportunities and blessings. And, you know, in many ways, the universe, God, you know, redirecting me to something even better than what, I, than what I've previously known. Yeah. Well, it's like you said, a lot of your clients that, you know, once they get past that, that, uh, oh, place of living in scarcity is that things just open up even faster. And yeah. it's, you know, it's like, it's almost like that, you know, we've got our heads down. We're, we're working to make payroll so hard. We don't see all this opportunity. Well, once we get that taken care of, we're not worried about it anymore. We look up and there's just all this stuff. And, yeah but we don't see it before because we're looking down as a kind yeah. of a metaphor. But yeah, no, I mean, I, I see that myself. But let's be honest. Most people are, most people are looking down at their smartphones. And they're <laughs> literally, they're literally, literally looking down. down yeah. 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 Mate, um, if you could kind of summarize uh, the three best lessons or learnings that you've had uh, 
throughout your life, what would they be? What would your top three lessons be? Um, that's a good question. I haven't actually had that asked before in three or as three. I would say one of them, maybe not necessarily in order, but one of them yeah. is um, find your purpose. Hmm. But I mean, before you do much, I mean, you got to get up in the morning, you got to go to work. Yeah, yeah, I get all that. But start f looking to find your purpose. Is this really the way you want to live the rest of your life? Well, if it's not, don't do it. Stop. Go do what, figure out what it is you want to go do and go do it. Um, and then the next thing would be go do it. I mean, actually go do something about it. Don't wait. Uh, it's better to make a mistake moving forward than it is just standing there. Um, and then lastly, I think kind of a combination of things would be lighten up and have fun. I mean, yeah. whether you believe in an afterlife or whatever spirituality you have, everybody pretty much agrees. This is the only shot you got here. So my belief is don't waste time. Don't waste any time. Find out what your purpose is, get out and go after it and have fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Regardless of what uh, may or may not happen in the afterlife, like you're living right here, right now in this present moment, you have the ability to create. Uh, Don't waste it. Life. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. Go do it. Yeah. Yeah. Tad, how can uh, the people watching, listening to this today connect with you if they want to find out more around uh, accelerated funnels and, and what it is you do? Probably the, well, if one of the most active networks I'm on is LinkedIn. You can just search Tad Stevens on LinkedIn and you can most likely find me. I don't think there's maybe two other guys named Tad Stevens on LinkedIn. Um, if you want to check out what I'm doing marketing wise, uh, absolutely. You can go to acceleratedfunnels.com. Check that out. Look around. Uh, if you want to go see the site that started it all, that's uh, cpethink.com. Um, unless you're a chartered accountant or a CPA here in the States or in Canada, that's probably not going to be very interesting. But if you want to, you can go check it out. Um, or you can just uh, Google me. I, I'm on several different pages. Of, um, you can find an email uh, out there somewhere. Just email. Message me on LinkedIn and be happy to message you back. Outstanding. So that's uh, how you can connect with Ted. And uh, I've got a little question to ask for those that are watching, listening. Uh, I would love if you could jump over to iTunes and uh, give the Comeback Game a five-star review on iTunes, write something great about uh, what you've got from the show or, or how uh, helpful you found it. And then uh, screenshot that and uh, shoot it off to us either through the website. Uh, you can also email it through to action at the hyphen game hyphen changes.com.au. And uh, we're going to draw in a winner for the best review and uh, send you some goodies in the mail. So if you're watching, listening to this today and uh, you got something out of it, maybe you're an avid uh, comeback nation follower, uh, please jump on iTunes and give us a five-star review as well. We'd be greatly appreciated. Tad, that was cool. I enjoyed that. Thank you. I did too. It was very fun. A lot yeah, of fun. Thank you. thank you so much for coming along. It, uh, you never know where this is going to go. And I love that we got a little bit woo-woo and started talking law of attraction <laughs> mindset because I honestly believe that that's the number one key to success above and beyond strategy and tactics, that if you're aligned internally and your mind's in the right place, you'll always attract the right experiences required for the most fulfilling life. It took me several years to figure it out, but it's what is working for me better than what I was doing before by a long shot. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Thanks so much for your time, mate. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in another episode soon. Absolutely. If you're in a position that many of our clients were before joining us, which is that your business is controlling you rather than you controlling your business, we would love to have a chat to you to see whether or not we might be the right fit to partner with you to help you grow and succeed in business. Over the past eight years, we've helped hundreds of business owners around the world to grow, scale and succeed in business. Uh, many of our clients report we've helped them to triple their profits and double their time off in 12 months or less. If you jump onto YouTube and notice the hundreds of testimonies, you'd see that this is a common theme amongst them. If you're a business owner that's generating more than $300,000 a year in annual revenue, uh, whether it's 500 million, five million, even $10 million a year, and you're looking to take your business and your life to the next level, we might be able to help. If you're noticing that your business is lacking structure, maybe systems or processes, maybe you're not quite attracting enough or, or the right type of quality leads, making enough sales, 
or maybe you've been having issues finding, hiring, retaining, and training the right team members, we could be a fit for you. Ultimately, we believe that we never have business problems, we have personal problems that are expressed through our business. And a lot of the work we do is with you as a business owner, helping you to constantly upgrade the way that you see life, the way that you make decisions, and the way that you help construct a profitable and purpose-driven business. In order for us to do that though, you need to book in a quick uh, 15 minute application call with one of our scaling specialists here at The Game Changers. Through the 15 minute call, we're gonna ask you a bunch of questions to see if or how we might better help you. If we can't help you, we'll let you know politely and do our best to point in the direction of someone that can. However, if we can help you, we'll look at booking you a one hour game plan session where we're gonna dive a lot deeper into where you and your business are at right now, where it is that you want to go in the next three, five, and 10 years time, and what are the potential roadblocks or challenges or even opportunities that are along the journey in order for you to get there faster. If you're really feeling that it's time for you to experience the love and the joy of running a business again, if you're really wanting to experience a business that does actually operate without you while still producing profit, uh, we may very well be the right fit. So book in a 15 minute call, we can have a chat and uh, see where we go from there. My name is Barry Baduti and uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully we get a chance to talk soon.